Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, ready to introduce you to Kerbal Space Program version 1.1. The developers have been uh, doing a lot of hard work at Squad trying to get this 1.1 uh, release. It's very exciting. First time we'll have 64 bit support on Windows. First time we have the smoothness and first time we can utilize more memory and all that sort of thing. But the purpose of this series is to try to uh, assist in the learning of the of the game for newcomers and uh, we're going to be doing a beginner's guide run through on how to accumulate those science points. Now what we're going to be doing first of all is starting off a new career. So we're going to stick with moderate mode here. We're going to um, use the defaults, select a flag, whichever you want, and, and start your game. Now the goal of career mode is to accumulate science. Uh, you do need money, but it's not really the primary thing you're worried about. Money comes quite easy later on in the game. What you need to do is first select some of your missions. So we're just going to grab the gather scientific data and launch our first vessel missions first. And we start making a rocket. First thing we need is a command pod. That's where our little Kerbinaut is going to go. We also need a rocket which we're going to stick on here. We also need um, just some basic fins to keep ourselves aerodynamically stable and we can use symmetry mode to uh, to add four of these equally spaced. We also need a parachute and just a couple of mystery goo units so that we can get a little bit of preliminary science on our first mission. So we're going to pop those uh, on the side there um, and for the moment we're not going to worry about creating a craft name because this isn't going to be around for very long. Oh, and one thing we have to do is just switch around our um, staging there so that we don't shoot our parachute off at the start with our rockets. So off we go. Now the main goal of this initial mission is to simply first launch our first rocket. Nothing too advanced. We're going to just simply go up. And we can time warp up in the corner here. You can also use the uh, greater than, less than symbols on the keyboard uh, to do that. And down we come. We're going to uh, hit the spacebar, pop our uh, pop our parachute. And down we come for a nice soft landing. Jebediah Kerman being very happy that his first launch ever has been a good one. Uh, we're just going to grab our science from the uh, from the landing site here because uh, at some point we want to pick that up and then we'll recover our vessel. And here we get a readout of the science we've earned and the experience that our pilot has gained. Now we can pick a mission, another mission at this point, but we'll go and spend some science and check out our mission stats. Underneath uh, here you'll see we've got a number of stats. And we also get to see our contract summaries on the side here, including some milestones, which are automatic missions. We'll just jump into our research and development center and we're going to grab the first couple of tiers which will give us a few extra parts that we have not yet unlocked and some decouplers and uh, communication device and whatnot. Um, we'll grab that escape the atmosphere uh -huh. mission and we'll also grab this swivel liquid fuel engine landed at Kerbin as well as that's an easy one to do we can test that right off the bat. The idea is to just pick the missions oh, that A you want to do and B uh, will give you nice easy science without having to do too much work in the short term because we want to get into space. We don't want to do too many missions on the ground. We're going to add a decoupler on the bottom of this. Uh, that's going to give us the ability to have multi stages. We're going to stick the new unlocked bigger SRB which is our solid rocket booster. We can actually alt click and, and actually grab and copy an entire segment of the craft. 
We're going to put fins just on the top layer because after after we lose that bottom layer, we're going to uh, still need aerodynamic um, surfaces just to keep us pointed in the right direction. We also want to just switch our thrust limiter down on this second stage, otherwise we're going to be going too fast and we're going to burn up trying to get out of the atmosphere, which we don't want to do either. Around 40 to 50% is about right. So you see here we've got a multi-stage, we've got our first solid rocket booster. We're going to lean it over a little, um, and this is to avoid going too high. We want to actually get some horizontal velocity so that we can um, essentially not be coming back down into the atmosphere too fast. There's, there's easily enough fuel here to get us out of uh, at the atmosphere and into orbit. So what we want to do here is burn out our first stage, disconnect, fire our second. Now you'll notice that our second has got a lot less thrust with it but it's going to burn a lot longer. Now that's going to mean that in the short term we're accelerating much slower um, which means we're not going to be pushing against the atmosphere at quite such a huge velocity which is going to keep our craft cool enough to get out of the atmosphere without burning up. And if you uh, leave that with uh, full thrust, it will burn up before it even gets out of the atmosphere. We're leaning it over more and more and we're just having a look here in map view, which is the M key, which will let you see how high we need to go. Now 70 uh, is 70,000 meters is the point where you exit the atmosphere. That's as far as we need to go, so as far horizontal as you can get. And you can see there we were actually getting quite hot, not hot enough to burn up, but close. Uh, we'll disconnect our stage there and we're just going to take a quick ride up into space. And uh, Jeb down there in the in the corner looking uh, quite calm for somebody who's taking his very first rocket ride in history. Just having a look at our parachute uh, settings there, you can actually adjust your parachute to open by itself at different altitudes and pressures. So there we are. As soon as you get out of the 70,000 K mark, you can actually time warp much faster. Um, so we can do that now just to curve us back over, back in the atmosphere. Now we're not going anywhere near fast enough at this point to get into an orbit or anything like that. This is suborbital. Around Kerbin, you actually need around 2200 uh, meters per second. So there's nowhere near enough velocity to actually get into a full orbit here. Um, but that comes later with more staging. So we're going to re-enter here. You'll notice that we get a little temperature gauge popping up from time to time there. That's, uh, that's just to indicate how close we're getting to burning up. Um, but as we get down to that 1000 meter per second mark, uh, you'll see there that we do actually uh, quite quickly cool down again. Let's pop our uh, parachute. And down we come. And again, we can use our time warp just to uh, skip through our shoot phase of the flight. Now you see there we've escaped the atmosphere um, and we've added a number of new milestones, 3,000 metres, 1,000 metres, uh, distance records, um, speed records and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, we've already got a good bunch of science out of this mission to unlock some new, some new parts. And another, we've splashed into the ocean. So we'll recover the vessel. Check out our science. And we'll be back for the next video.